introducing Redan TV. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, I present to us a prolific writer, a motivational speaker, a researcher, a revered academic, and director of research and innovations office, University of Lagos. Please welcome Professor Timothy Benga Nobi. Please let's clap for him. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, with gratitude to God Almighty and appreciation to uh, people that God has used to push me to where I am. Um, the representative of the Secretary of the Federal Government, a colleague, a fellow professor of a great university, University of Port Harcourt, a founder of a university himself. We appreciate your coming. God bless you. And uh, to the, our president, uh, well done, sir. And to the chairman, B.O.T., the man who gave me my first job in, two, in 1982, uh, Prince Lufa DG. Uh, you will clap for the person that gave me my first job. Uh, I was roaming the streets of Lagos looking for a job. Uh, and I told my uncle, who was actually a director then, and we got in touch with him. And he just asked my uncle, where is that your boy? Uh, my uncle said, I don't keep him in my pocket. <laughs> I will have to be. Then I was, it was a time of a period of no telephone. So I have to send for me. Thank you. Uh, he's been a great role model, and uh, we are proud of you. Thank you, sir. My friend and the MD of uh, Federal Mogi Bank. Uh, thank you, sir. And many people here, uh, Ogai, Guy Okeshuku, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Town Planner Gaba, thank you so much. My friend, I'm almost my twin brother, uh, Malam Suleiman, I have not located you. Uh, we thank God that, you know, I'm standing before you with mixed feelings that uh, the seed that was grown in 2002 is becoming bigger and bigger every day. With sense of humility, I'm so happy to be here to talk to this body. Because Redan started in my office in the University of Lagos. It was the Secretariat. Redan was, my office was the Secretariat for three years. The registration form for Redan, I designed it for members. And the logo, I remember the logo, was designed by my students of architecture. Uh, students of architecture in mind. And when the Redan office moved out of Lagos, my friend, where's my name, Suleiman? OK, this pillar is blocking me. Uh, my friend, Madame Suleiman of Imani Estate, graciously accommodated Redan. So we moved the Redan Secretariat from my office to his own office uh, at uh, my Tama. Uh, thank you for all you have done for Redan. Uh, it was with him, the Secretariat was with him for almost three years before we were able to settle down and rent our first office. Ashifa uh, the MC remarked that uh, you are moving from office to office for as many that have grown red and uh, My brother there, Brother Oka, uh, this is uh, gracious job done with passion. With passion. I remember when uh, our financial secretary went away with our, all we had. 25 million. That was all we had. That 25 million, I brought almost half of it from Lagos. Members registration. It's been a journey. And it was so active. It was so active that uh, 
Baba Yakonde wrote, we good, I want to say thank you to Baba, the founding president uh, of uh, Redan, Baba, Baba Yakonde. Because the man, well, let's just appreciate him. Uh, those are great Nigerians and blessings to humanity. Uh, Baba Yakonde gave him a thank you letter, you know, just to appreciate his zeal. And uh, less than one month, all the money disappeared. When he was arrested, he showed the letter of uh, thank you of Baba Yakonde to the police. I said, don't mind them. This is me that they commended. They were only envious. They removed all the money. They emptied it. The, they deleted everything from the computer. It was connivance. Uh, somebody, somebody remarked then. Because in the office, in the Secretariat of Red and Den, we have the Yorubas, we have the Igbos, we have the Hausas there. But Nigeria said, people said that, how can Nigeria could, this is the first time Nigeria really cooperated to, to steal. And uh, because they went away with all the money that we had. But that was the, that was the beginning of Redan. And with, that's why I'm saying that we have to go through this lane to see that those of us that God used to start will look with the heart of gratitude. Are we where the vision? Are we fulfilling the vision? Are we where we ought to be? We can say no, but we are not where we were in 2002. We have made progress. And I believe that every one of us will deserve to clap for ourselves. I'm still waiting. I'm talking because I don't have my stick. I don't have my, my paper loaded. OK, thank you. Where is the pointer? You promised me, because it's so we have about 62 slides. Though many of them are pictures. So if I don't control them from here, it will be very difficult for me. So it's been a journey. And one thing I kept on saying is that things are changing. Most of the things I will say here uh, is like storytelling. And to tell us that we really need to position ourselves for the future we're really looking for. We really need to position ourselves for the future we're waiting for. One thing that is certain, I kept on telling my colleagues in Redan, is that our generation, there is these anomalies in the country or in Africa, whereby you build houses. In developing countries and in poor nations, the an average person, they build houses. But all over the world, people buy houses. For you to buy a house, to build a house in US, in UK, you must belong to a particular income bracket, a celebrity. People like uh, Muhammad Ali. But an average person will buy a house. But in Nigeria, we build a house. And the rich among us, they buy. And I kept on saying that my own children, either we like it or not, we not, buy, we not build a house, they will buy. So we are in a market that is, we must prepare a market that is future ready. And the future that we think is far is right here. My son, two years ago, just phoned me. He lives in Europe. He said, Dad, I saw some properties identified. Aaron property, Aaron estate in Lagos. He said, are they real? I said, what, what, what do you need? He said, I'm looking at one or two of them. So he didn't tell me that daddy buy land for me and look for bricklayer. Their generation, we buy. And 
That means that we are in the we are in the right we are operating at the right time. Where people will not go through the problem of omonile. They will just search for your site and pay online. So we must be ready. We must have products that are really ready for that to serve this generation that we are in. So we are at the beginning of a process, and the future is quite beautiful for us. The remote. Where do I control my paper? Hello? Yes. I've said this since, yes. since nine. So, eh? I said next. Ah, you can't next this one. No. They, pro they told me that. Okay, go to the first. Go to the first page. Because there are so many, and there are many that I really want to jump. So that's why next. They promised me. They told me. And, okay. Uh, one thing I want to say is that housing. Okay. Are people on the right table? That space for them. Okay, you can see. Sir. Okay. Uh, I'll say that represents one of the most basic human needs. Uh, I can sit down. But yeah. often treated that in transit economies like unwanted step child, frustrating new not producing sector of the economy. That's unfortunately fish. They always believe that it will wait. They always believe that housing can wait. I still can wait. Uh, it's on. Okay. Is that the remote? So I check one two. The next the next. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's working now. Thank you so much. Uh well, I always want to say to see the magnitude of what is before us. This is a picture from Lagos. This is, this is, this is, uh, it's not working. You are changing it. That's why I say it can work. Where we can see a bed and we can see the beautiful house. This are uh, everything that God has created. They have the architecture, they have beautiful design. And this is a peak of architecture and engineering. If you can look at it, how can that nest be hanging on that on that leaves? That's engineering, isn't it? And there will be wind and everything. Uh, it's not working. Next. Okay, you see termites, they have a house. And I think those people are obeying the biblical injunction, go to the ant and land. You know, ants, they have houses. And when you look at the next, look at the next one. The architecture and engineering is superb. The coin is down, down there. And you see the soldiers. Those are the least in God's creature. But they were able to house themselves. They were able to ask themselves. And um, uh, the housing, the mass housing, mass housing in Nigeria today, we have two to two trillion required to finance housing. We have population that lack decent quality urban life. We have estimated housing deficit about 16 to 20 million. Uh, like someone said, it depends on the author you are citing. Urban population grew twice the national population. Those are the issues around mass housing. But the truth is that, you know the joy is that there is a market. There is a market. Like I kept on telling anyone, do you, who, do you need to do feasibility study to go into transportation business in Lagos? You don't need it. You buy 20 Los buses. Take it to Ojota. 
within two minutes, they are all filled up. So, that tells you the, the beauty and the opportunity that is before us. Let's go to the next slide. Multiple global environmental crises in Africa. Desertification, urbanization, and terrorism. These are issues we are contending with in our time. And these issues, they influence, they influence our business. And as long as climate change is there, and the deserts are disappearing, you can never force those who are doing nomadic agriculture to remain and die in the desert. They will move to where the green grass are. So there is going to be continuous challenge of banditry until we sit down and find solution. So these are things that are facing us as a people. Uh, there are several government policies in the past as presented. Provision of residential quarters, the colonial period, after colonial period, creation of FNBN, reform of FNBN. So many things had happened. Uh, we see them as so many policies. Pioneer Federal Minister of Housing, Urban Development, Environmental was created. Right? So many policies. Every year, there are always one solution or the other offered. Uh, we see up to 1991, they bring it to, be, to play the national housing policy. The housing became a major issue in this country that a party, a major political party, uh, uh, MPN, put housing in the center of their flag and they called them in Yoruba and Egbe Onili. That tells us the position of uh, uh, housing. The failure of past policies. The issue of both public and private sector housing delivery in Nigeria revealed that effective solutions to housing problems are yet to be found. Despite these several policies and schemes, we are still where we are. Because today, we see Nigeria at a crossroad. The dilemma of ideological inconsistency. Because when we say, what's the problem of housing in Nigeria today, people say land, finance, yes. But the problem we are facing is ideological inconsistency. Where the policy statements were not consistent. If I ask us, if I ask us in this hall, is Nigeria a socialist country or a capitalist country? Please, I just need an answer. We are a capitalist country. We are a capitalist country. We believe in capitalism and we practice capitalism. But the land use decree is a socialist policy. It's a socialist policy where you nationalize the land in a capitalist economy. There's a conflict in ideology. And those are what we are facing. That's what we are facing. Land use decree we work in a socialist economy. That's nationalization of the land. And land is the basis of capital. If we read the Soto's book, it's the basis of capital. And you see government are holding to the land as a socialist policy in a capitalist economy. There's this inconsistency. And we see all these consequences in the policy. Up to the point that somebody is saying that government has no business competing with developers in provision of housing. When you suddenly see LSDPC that was doing social housing became commercialized, they have access to land, they have access to infrastructure, and they are competing with you, and they want you to sell at the same rate. So, these are inconsistencies in policy. Policy inconsistency, policy transfer under neoliberalism. Those are issues we are facing. And until we resolve them, we'll just be marking. We, we say that this policy comes, it's not working. Why is it not working? Because policy transfer under neoliberalism. Neoliberalism is a general Associated, generally associated with free trade, reduced government intervention in wealth creation, and the promotion of market dependent strategy to serve economic and social need. That's what the World Bank and the World Power were pushing to, at us. No subsidy of housing. Leave everything for the market. It, and when you look at UK today, will you describe UK 
as a capitalist country, UK is a socialist country. It's a welfare country. A country where they have council houses for the poor who could not afford the market rent, where they have health uh, opportunity, where you go to the hospital, where you go to school between age one and college, uh, A-levels, free of charge. That's a socialist ideology. So, but these people, their economy was built on subsidy, and they were telling developing countries, no, no subsidy. No, no subsidized housing. So neoliberalism actually made government to withdraw from basic things. There are some things you cannot withdraw from. And up to 1986, before this opened the market up, before this adoption of neoliberalism, government will tell banks, these are loans that you must make available to a different sector. I agree this percentage, this, this percentage. We have not grown to the we have not grown our economy to the point that we say liberalize everything. Government have no business in housing. Government have no business in market driven houses. But the social housing for those who could not afford to buy in the market, they are there. Up to tomorrow, people are buying through mortgage in UK. But if you cannot afford, I've seen, I've witnessed there are rough sleepers in UK. People sleep in railway station, people sleep in train station, in airport. The people will just come and carry you, rough sleepers, and put you into a project. And the beauty of that, we cannot overemphasize what we gain. So, it's a nation that really has to define itself. Uh, of the rules, of the rules supply the much, are these rules supply the much taunted benefit? The answer is no. The answer is no. So we have to look at the market and the liberalism. Can the private sector operate in all housing subsectors? No. When you are telling Redan, uh, uh, Redan houses are expensive. Yes, Redan is, Redan is not established. Uh, Redan members are not NGOs. They get to the bank and borrow money. But what do we do to make houses affordable? We will get to that shortly. We'll get to that shortly. Uh, the problem across the housing development value chain. We have the land. We have the issue of title. We have the issue of, uh, develop the, of infrastructure. We have the issue of construction itself. We have the issue of sales. Many developers have developed estates that people were not buying. Because we only suddenly realize that, oh, there is... The, 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 real, the market, the, 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 the value chain must all be well developed. And the one thing about housing, uh, one thing about housing is that uh, we have the problem of existing land, uh, housing stock, the finance issues as presented. I will make these slides available. The truth is that the city reflects the way their houses were financed. That's Leon 2002. If you have a well-structured finance system, finance is the key thing. That's why my inaugural in 2015, I said beyond brick and mortar. Housing have gone beyond brick and mortar. It's a product. It has to be commoditized. There must be finance. Once you have a robust and well-structured finance system in any country, you will see well-developed land and housing. But where there's no, where there's absence of a well-structured finance system, people will be building incrementally. According to Omiri, 1992, an average Nigerian built their house for about 15 to 22 years. They laid the foundation, they plant cassava and cocoa Five years, they come and raise the wall to link window level to window level. It's after 15 years, they get to the roofing level. You have harvested 10 years cassava from a foundation, and you are saying housing collapse. So those are issues that we are facing. So imperfection of floor of poor housing finance system, which uh, is key to what we are doing. We are still running a nation where we see this type of construction. It cannot work. It cannot work. See? Uh, OK. 
This is incremental construction. This is what the, the model that people are used to. Lay the foundation, complete the first room. Sometimes it's another generation that will complete the house. It cannot work. In all over the world, all over the, this, uh, we have many people as, these slides are not taken in any forest. These are surrounding of University of Lagos. These are surrounding. The high-rise building you are seeing on picture three is the high-rise where University of Lagos staff lives. So, it's not a picture that is hidden. You see these places from the third Milan Bridge. This is a wire. I took the picture myself. The situation has not changed. These are my students surveying the surrounding of the University of Lagos. So, these are 70% of Nigerians, they were living in this condition. 70% of Nigerians, they were living in slum. 70% of Nigerians, they are living in slum. And that is the truth. This is where Nigerians are living. This is Makoko. We all see Makoko Iwaya from the 10 million bridge. They are not hidden. How can we get out of these problems? Uh, part of the reasons. Fashola spoke. Our government of yesterday expressed its preference for providing infrastructure of the stomach. Giving handouts instead of real infrastructure. This is how the seed of today's recession was sown. That we wasted our money. We did not invest in roads, highways, bridges, schools, and hospitals. Money was taken out of the larger society and invested in private accounts. The economy began to shrink. Construction companies laid off workers who in turn lost income, which resulted in shrinking demand for goods and services and in turn led to national underproductivity. He said the solution is to spend on infrastructure, which has started. The recovery time is a function of what we can spend on how quickly we can go around it. If an added land has not witnessed in rainfall in two or three years, you know what happens when the first rain falls. It literally disappeared into the ground. In order to reach a point where any moisture is feasible in the soil, that, that may support the germination of seed to be planted, more rain water needs to be injected. That is the truth. That is the truth. No matter how we feel. Housing is a system. I am putting this thing, I'm touching them in bit. These are separate lectures on their own. Housing is a system. And this uh, is of the federal government. Housing is a system. And that mistake we made in this country. You have a beautiful car. I say, oh, come and see my car. It's so beautiful. It's only that the battery is not good. You don't have a car. Oh, I have a beautiful car. It's a carburetor, small carburetor. It's not working. You don't have a car. Oh, I have a beautiful car, but the wiper is not working. When it's raining, you pack it. You don't have a car. I have a beautiful car. The air lamp is malfunctioning. You don't have a car. I have a beautiful car. The tire, the tires are not good. You don't have a car. For you to say, I have a car, all the components must be functioning. And that is housing. You know, we, we have delayed for too long. So let us solve the problem of land. When we solve the problem of land, we face finance. When we solve the problem of finance, we come to construction materials. When we solve the problem of construction materials, we can face mortgage. No. Every sector, holistic, they must be working at the same time. And we have the responsibility to make sure that every aspect of the value chain, they begin to work. There are people that colonize us. They went through this process. And today, they are better off. So, what we are saying is not what nations have not done. They have done it. We remember this. We remember this picture. 
There was time in England that bulldozers were rolled and they started demolishing houses to give way for better housing. Many of us, who is this woman? Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher. I, she turned around the story of housing in UK. And I'm trusting God that this present government will turn around the story of housing. If someone has done it before, and it can be done. It can be done. The mass housing need indicators. Millions in the informal sectors. Over 200,000 military personnel. Over 200,000 teachers. Over 250,000 policemen. Over 500,000 public servants. Over 500,000 students. This slide you see was in 2007. It was a slide we presented to uh, President Yadua when I was in the Board of Federal Housing Authority. This was the slide we presented. You can imagine this figure as of today. I consciously uh, left it there. There was a roadmap. If we have this demand, it's time to put a stop to the disjointed incrementalism approach of housing delivery and embrace an integrated holistic approach that will enable us to deliver housing on a large scale, on a sustainable manner. The time is now. The time is now. There is no way houses can be affordable until it is mass produced. My grandmother was aware of that. That's why the fact that she was illiterate, she would never price anything uh, she always write things in Dossi. I say, how much is it, Dossi? They will say two naira. The mobile will eventually buy three. As Mama, you are pricing Dossi. Very simple economics tell us, sells us, scales in production. The more you produce, the more you produce, the more you reduce the cost. As long as the solution is not in FMBN, increasing the cost of housing, the, the value of the loan giving, to 15,000, to 20,000, to 20 million, to 50 million, because we say, where is 50 million house in the market? Where is 10 million house? We have the responsibility to work together to crash the cost of construction. And cost of construction will never go down if we continue to build one by one incrementalism. No, it will not. Mass housing supply through regeneration rather than new build and robust mortgage finance. We need it. For this assets we are looking for, they recognize the various stakeholders need to deliver to mandate. They recognize that housing delivery at its at the scale must be tailored towards effective demand. Many of our members, when they started, they built houses that people are not coming to buy. No one should go to the site and break ground without having at least 50% or 60% of stakers. It is it is not done. And that's why we are working with cooperatives that mobilize the country through more creative, through cooperative. Current types of housing delivery agencies in the country need to be integrated into the holistic delivery framework. We look at the understanding with the sector. Redner members have to understand we are not only in business. We are what Baba Mabungye told us the day we were inaugurated as an association is that you are a pressure group. You are into business. But coming together of regular members with the wealth they will be controlling, they will be able to exert pressure on government to change policy, to come up with policy that will favor them. So we are pressure group. And we have to look at all, we have to understand the real estate value chain, interrogate it, and see how we will intervene in all these aspects of Value, uh, value system. Understanding the housing finance system, we must know that all over the world is mortgage. It, it saddens me because my, my own children, they schooled in Europe. A year after leaving school, they bought their houses. And I see their counterpart in Nigeria that I'm lecturing. They were still on the street. They can't find bearing in life. And you see somebody who left school five years after having two houses. Where? He got mortgage. Mortgage is the language of 
real estate. Until the mortgage sector is put in proper shape, we will just be working in circles. Because you can build a house. If people have no money to buy, the house is there. The house is just there, wasting. So, all over the world, this is the housing finance system. It's between primary and mortgage bank. It's the secondary and primary mortgage bank. And I will see the interaction in the slide there. The mortgage market, the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary institution. Uh, the, to accentuate the issue of mortgage, when you look at this, in Denmark, mortgage forms 85% of the GDP. In USA, 71%. In UK, 70%. In Portugal, it's 50%. In Finland, it's 35%. In Hong Kong, 30%. In Nigeria, it's less than 5%. So when you look at mortgage, when you look at the quantum of mortgage in your GDP, you can tell the, the prosperity, the level of prosperity of that nation. And to tell us that what led to the... What, to, Unfortunately, the government of this country have not been able to establish the nexus between housing, mortgage, residential property market, and the national economy. And that's why they kept on. When they said they have housing summit, and nothing is discussed about, when they have uh, economic summit, nothing is discussed about housing. I just laugh. Because the, wor the wealth of the world is between two sectors, residential properties and stock. Residential properties, about 48%. The stock, about 51%. The remaining 2% between other sectors. And that's why, because of the subprime lending that led to bust of mortgage in UK, in US, in 2006, 2007, the whole world went into recession that we've not been able to come out. That tells us the importance of mortgage in the global economy. And we can't but develop the mortgage if we want to make progress as a nation. But mortgage can never take off if there are no housing stock. Because before you can say you have mortgage, there must be housing stock. I kept on telling my students, if anybody should get to FMBN or any of these primary mortgage banks, and they give them loan to go and develop a plot, build house, lay foundation, they have not given them mortgage, they've given them construction loan. Mortgage is the money you give to people to pay back minimum 20, 25 years. That is mortgage. That is mortgage in its definition. And we have to grow it to that extent. We have to grow it to that extent. The problem of mortgage in Nigeria is a poor capital base, non availability of housing stock, unbundled mortgage system, and locations of the mortgage, primary mortgage, the PMI, not focused on main business. I'll just give you about the unbundling of the mortgage system. Unbundling of the mortgage system. Jack, uh, Shagari mortgage. How many minutes? Five minutes. OK. You see, the Shagari, the Shagari system, the, the Shagari estate was established to introduce Nigeria into mortgage. Those who bought those property at two million, three million, they took mortgage of twenty years. You bought a property for two million, three million. Is it million? Thousand. 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 They took a mortgage of twenty. They took a mortgage of twenty uh, twenty years. They took a mortgage of twenty years for twenty years. And we found out that. Many of them, they were paying back just 60 naira every month. 60 naira. Because if a house, I will, there is no time to come to that. Because the debate, there is no affordable housing. That what brings affordability? We have been saying this times without number. When Montelin came, when Montelin came to Nigeria, it, they were selling Montelin then at 180,000 naira. You understand? You know Multilink? Yes. This box that you carry about, the first wireless in Nigeria. It was 180,000. 
People ran back. People like me could not. There was a dear need for it because all of us were tired of night air. But when they introduced it, it was only 80,000. We all ran back. But they introduced a promo. They said, buy, pay 50,000 and pay 10, 10,000 for 18 months. At the end of the day, if you pay it, it, if you pay five thousand fifty thousand and you pay ten ten thousand for eighteen months, how much have you eventually bought it? Two thirty more than the original price, but it became affordable. People like me, people came from Saka Jojo to Idiutelo to buy it because it became affordable. What brought the affordability? Is it that the income of people increased? No, the time of payment, the long time for payment, and that is mortgage. No matter how expensive a commodity is, if the time of payment, if mortgage is introduced today, how does it become affordable? How does it become affordable? So it is mortgage. It is mortgage. There are three, I told you there are three factors. Income, cost, and mortgage. Time of repayment. In the country, we set uh, minimum income from 18 to 30,000. Only six states paid. So, asking for government to pay more, forget it. What we have to concentrate on is how do we reduce cost of construction? Because if a house is five million and I cannot afford as a professor, if you sell it for 500,000, all of us will buy. So, what we need to focus on is how do we as developer build more and crash the cost. How can the mortgage industry make funds available for a long time so that people will buy what we have built? Then that is the shortcut to affordability in the country. I think you will clap now. You are not clapping. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mentioned on bundling. Let me quickly come to that because the mortgage, the head of mortgage in Nigeria is here. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me mention what killed Shagari mortgage. If you default in mortgage for three months, if you default, there will be foreclosure. But this is a woman, this is a man, Shagari estate in Shaki, the only mortgage bank for the man to pay back the 66,000 every month. It's at Ibadan. Was at Ibadan. The woman have to transport herself 200 naira from Shaki to Ibadan to pay 60 naira. Does it make sense? So the woman will wait for five, six months, accumulate it to justify the payment. By the time she has waited for five, four months, she has what? Defaulted. So. Why was, what did that happen? Because mortgage was not unbundled. The insurance sector was unbundled. The, the mortgage sector was not unbundled. If I want every, people are using cars at Shaki, people are using cars at Jabo, the people are using cars at uh, uh, Karu, people are using cars at Ilela in Sokoto, but they don't need to come to Sokoto, people living in Ilela, they don't need to come to Sokoto to, to get insurance. Because insurance have been unbundled. There are brokers in Ilela that they walk to and take their policy. When they want to renew their insurance, they go to Ilela. They don't need to come to. But because all the PMIs were at the federal capital, and in Lagos, 90% were in Victoria Island. So many boys got in Victoria Island. So, mortgage will not work in a situation where they have not unbundled. So, it is the responsibility of government to unbundle the mortgage sector, to make sure that brokers who are registered all over Europe, all over America, they are mortgage brokers. They are mortgage brokers. So, it's a key issue that we have to look at to deepen the mortgage market in Nigeria. We have to unbundle the mortgage sector. Uh, well, proposed regeneration program. 
Uh, there is only one thing I want to say. People are, uh, there is enough debate. There is enough debate on, uh, there is no housing deficit of 17 million. I proved that severally, that the, the figure is bogus. People will say that we have 20 million housing deficit. If an average household size is five, and we multiply by 20 million, we multiply by 20 million, which means that we have 100 million uh, people uh, living outside. No, we can't say that. We can't say that. So, uh, I want to say that there is opportunity for us as real estate developer not to focus on new builds alone. Not to focus on new builds alone. They are all over the world. Slums are being transformed to this kind of development. These developments are in Asia. So, they are all over the world. It's not small-time developers that are doing this. They are developers. So, we should not all face new builds. New builds. Let's work with government to, to clean up. Because these slums, they were in the prime locations of our cities. All these slums locations of Makoko, Look at Lagos, for example, from Adekunle to Iwaya, to Oworoshoki, to Ketu, Agboyi, to Ebute. All of them, they were at this lagoon front. And all over the world, lagoon fronts are prime properties. But we see our lagoon fronts in Nigeria being occupied by slum. So it is our preoccupation to make sure that we begin to take in urban regeneration into our portfolio. And the question is that they've done it in Kenya. They've done it in South Africa. We can do it. One architect, the members of architects, they were there. We had a good week message representing for Vince of Architects. Many of us that were used to Lagos, there is this place they call Oluwale. Oluwale is a slum and notorious for What's Oluwale known for? Fraud. fraud. Certificate, aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Certificate for and all the rest. This is Oluwale. That's Oluwale in the midst of well developed place of Lagos Island. But an architect, architect leaves, took it upon himself, and re regenerated Oluwale. 175 families were taken off that location took them to Shasha, resettled them at Shasha, while they were building Oluwole, and eventually they... Okay. Okay. Uh, you, see, you see, the problem I have is that my minimum lectures in university is three hours. <laughs> <laughs> because I take three units courses. I take three units courses. Uh -huh. Those are the students I see every week. Oh. How much more you have never seen again? So, uh, yes, don't worry. We will get there. Uh, it's a story telling, and I think you are enjoying it. Uh -huh. So, do you want to deny them where they are enjoying? Okay, I just want to tell us that it is doable. Oluwole is like this today. No longer that slow. We have to put up a structure in our office. This young man engaged the ones and five families, built a beautiful flat for them, Ashasha, Research to them. I went to Shasha and interviewed those people. They were, they were in tears. They said, in our life, we never knew we could live in such a beautiful estate. Their children were riding bicycle. And eventually, it was a joint partnership with them. Eventually, they had the first two floors. We had the build shops for them. They were occupying. So, I, also, I was also involved in Ijora Badia. When Governor Fashola was uh, the governor, this was Ijorabadia that we, we presented to him and he gave us the site to go and turn around. And uh, this is what we have there. This is what. You see, this is when Ijorabadia project was under construction. It was a research product of uh, Professor Olusoya that was turned to this.
in a Yoruba there. You see, it's doable. It's doable. It's Yoruba there. Yeah, it's doable. That's the house under construction. But this was a former slum. At the Yoruba there, when it's almost, face, almost facing National Theater. So we have such prime land at Kano, Kaduna, that we must begin to work on. The one I was also involved is the Ilasan. Ilasan happened to be Jack on the estate, where people that were evicted from Morocco were sent to, first, forcefully occupied. It was a very volatile place. They don't want to see government people. But we work with them. I took 200 students there. We did the enumeration. We did enumeration of about 2,000 people. People came from U.S. Because they are attachment to that land. And because of this slum, you see, there was a looting. When, when they were in South Africa, South Africa and uh, ENSA, the shop right that was looted, the shop right that was looted, 70% of those who looted that place were traced to that place. Slum in our community is a dead spot. We have to get rid of them. But we don't forcefully eject them. We work with them to develop beautiful estate. The economy, the land there is 60 hectares. Big land in that prime land. It's an island of poverty surrounded by affluence. But we see that this is the design and proposal we made for them. That one third of the land can be used because this is a small, small building. We can go up to four or five floors, accommodate them there. We release 40 hectares of land, prime land for real estate development. This is how we must be able to prepare to regenerate our cities. Another method is actually uh, putting cooperative together. I won't uh, I won't uh, talk much about that. Cooperatives are the best of takers. And Nigerians, we have cooperatives. Even those who are selling pepper in the market, they have association. So we, we, have, we have to leverage on this cultural uh, system to release people into mass housing market. So there are so many houses in Lagos, in Kaduna, that were not completed. There must be government policy. Instead of saying that uh, I want to give 50 million, 15 million to buy a new house, many Nigerians just need 1 million to put roof. And in 1977, government gave an act, the Act of Roof, 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 uh, roof, Roofing Act, that they gave loans to people to complete their roof. And thousands of houses were brought to the market. We must give home improvement and house completion loan. Those who are building their houses for 16 years, if they need, it, if they were given intervention, they can bring the, the property to the market within a short time. Then we need the new build for outright purchase, for shared equity, for rent to buy. All these are products that FMBN said they are implementing today. So all these I've said, I'm concluding with the model we brought up that let there be housing finance fund let government be ready to work with Redan. We call them development agents. Those are Redan. Then, working with cooperatives, working with FMBA, we can create a bulk, a mass housing portfolio that will be secretized in the secondary market. And this is the model that can really, this is the model that brings every stakeholder together and that the role of government is expressed in this model. That all over the world, people will never have enough money to pay for the mortgage, to pay for the house. They have their equity. They have their equity. They have the loan they've taken. There is a gap. The gap is funded through government infrastructure. Uh, government must be able to do it. That was the success of Babaja Konde in Lagos. He said, as a governor, I have the responsibility to provide land. I have the responsibility to provide infrastructure. So when you remove land and infrastructure from cost of land, the cost will crash. So government must really wake up to that responsibility of funding the affordable gap. The government rules are well stated. Uh, 
in conclusion housing education. That's why we started in University of Lagos. Today, in University of Lagos, we have masters and PhD in housing. Because we got loan from Africa Development Bank in 2013. We got grant to establish the center. It's a big center today that I've spoken to one or two people that have come to the center. We need to have understanding. We found out that there is lack of housing education in the country. We got, we, I became aware of that in 2007 when we were in the National Housing Committee. And we are saying REIT will solve the problem of the country if we can have REIT. Oh, housing finance will be available through REIT. The person that represented the ministry in that committee, we've been saying this since Monday. On Friday, when we wanted to round up, he said, hey, you people have been saying REIT, REIT will help this sector. Where is he living? <laughs> if he's in Lagos, let's bring him. Because as at that time, General Reese was the, M the chairman of uh, FHA. So he thought REIT is another name. So we found out that people, they have, they have little understanding of this sector. So that's why we started that program. Housing education is very important. We must embrace it. My dream since 2006, when I served on, the, on that committee of federal housing, is that this is where we are today. I took this picture myself. This is Tommy Bridge that is behind it. So it's not hidden. This is where Nigerians were living. House to let. Within two weeks of that advert, that house was fully occupied. That is in the heart of Lagos. Where are you? In every part of the world, you don't see shanties facing sea. So, but this is where we wish to be. And through the effort of Reda, we will achieve that. Through the effort of Shredder. Thank you for listening. Thank you. It is important. Please clap. Red and TV, first hand real estate channel.